Hey guys, this is Oasis back with another video on the channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you WebStorm, which is an ID built by JetBrains. It is mainly targeted for Node.js, Angular, React View, and various other frameworks that are supported. This ID is really great. I know I've done a few videos about WebStorm. Uh, you might be thinking it's a sponsor video. Well, it's not. It's just that I want to show you how you can utilize these features which are available in WebStorm and make your web development faster. This is going to be a complete video of WebStorm. I've done a few videos previously, but they were not complete tutorials. So I'm going to be talking about everything that you need to know about a WebStorm and how to use this amazing IDE properly. So in a nutshell, we're going to talk about initial setup. We're going to talk about how the common workflow happens in WebStorm, also configuration slash settings, setting up key maps and various support for languages. I'm going to be showing you how you can install plugins and talk about tool windows and shortcut keys of those. We're going to talk about complete file menu, edit menu, tool menu, view and appearances, search, code refactoring. Also, the main topic I'm going to be covering in this one is a version control system and deployment FTP client. I've done the video of PyCharm where I've shown the, how to use HTTP client. So if you want to check that out, have a look. I will drop a link of that into the description of this video. Uh, okay, so let's get started with WebStorm. When you start WebStorm for the first time, this is the window that you're going to be seeing. It says, Welcome to WebStorm. Okay, so there are three options available at the start create new project, open or get from version control. We get back to the version control later. On the left, it, these are your previous project open if you had any. You probably won't see anything here because you probably haven't uh, created a project. You're gonna have to click on this configure button and you will get to these options. Going to the preference, which is like a settings in Mac, plugins, run configuration. You can export and import settings for the WebStorms as well. Basically, these options are pretty much available in all the JetBrains products. Now, I'm going to be showing you how you can create an Angular project. So we'll click on create new project. Here, you have multiple options. You can create an Angular 7, or Angular 8 project, Angular JS project, a Bootstrap, Cordova app, you can use uh, HTML, Meta.js, and there are other frameworks that support it here, but you're gonna have to install plugins for those, but these are automatically installed, and you can choose one of the framework to start with. I'm gonna be using Angular CLI here. It says Angular CLI version 8.3.20 will be used, which is, I guess, the latest version of Angular CLI, and the node version is listed here as well. So I'm gonna open Terminal, and on terminal, you can see node space dash dash version. So we got the same version 12.13.1. Okay, so now I'm gonna choose the location for that. So I'm just gonna save that project on a desktop. I'm gonna create a project called demo folder, and I'm gonna use that folder there. I'm gonna click on create, and it will create an Angular 8 project for me. Now on the terminal, it's installing all the packages which are required for an Angular project. We're going to start by looking at tools available in WebStorm. So here we can see we have a project view. Okay, this project view will show you all the files which are available in your project. We got a source folder for Angular project. I'm going to take you to a terminal. So WebStorm has a built-in terminal. I'm using Mac, so I can use all the Unix-based command here. If you're on Windows, you can uh, you know, use command prompt or PowerShell, or you can install Git Bash as well. So, okay, so we got the run menu, which basically when you run a project in a debugger or just run a project using WebStorm IDE, it will show up here. All its log will be here. We got a to-do list, we'll come back to it. This is mainly to do with your commenting. Check out a file menu. In file menu, we have a common options available. If you wanna create a new project, go here, click on the project, open, open URL. It will show you all the recent projects here. We can close the project or rename project. There are other settings available for new projects. So basically, these are the default setting that you can set for all the new projects that are gonna be creating. 
I'm going to go back to file menu and here we got import and export setting. So let's just say that you configure WebStrom according to your requirement. Like you might have some shortcut keys that you like. You might want to have some debugger setup or terminal setup. You can export those settings and you can use that file to import that same sort of setting into other JetBrain products. Also, you can, you know, import that from another computer. So here we have some repository setting. We're going to come back to this when we talk about the version control system, save all. When you press command S or control S on the window, the project will be saved. There's a power saving mode, which is going to help you to save your battery when your laptop is not on the charge. Okay, I'm going to open a file here. So let's just open app module file. And here you see the colors of your files are pretty nice. Okay. So I'm going to try zooming in to this text to show you the colors available. So we're going to go to preference and I'm going to find a command with the zoom. I'm going to click on general and here is change font size with command plus mouse wheel. I'm going to click OK, click OK. Now I can increase the font size by just using pressing command and a control wheel. Okay, now you can see the color scheme is pretty nice. The text is pretty nice as well. I'm going to go to HTML and now it's, you know, having a support for your HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And it has a very, very strong support for TypeScript as well. I've done various about videos about it. Okay, so these are the file menu. You have a TSLint file. Now you would notice one thing that there are icons available for all of these files. This is because WebStrom knows about these files and knows very well. So if you want to type something here, it'll give you suggestions. So I'm going to press enter here and as you can see, it automatically added this comma for me. I'm going to remove this comma and close this file. Take a look at some common operations. In edit menu, you have a cut copy. We have paste here, paste from history. I'm going to click on that and it's going to have to show me history of your project. Well, there is no history as of now because it's a fresh project, so I won't see anything. So I'm going to go back to edit menu and here we have search features. So I'm going to click on find that shows me this green uh, border on this input field. So I can find like Angular and it will search for me in this file. Now, WebStorm has a very strong capabilities of searching in your project because it knows about your project. If it's Angular or Vue or Cordova app, so it's really great with its searching capabilities. I'm going to type command shift O and it's going to show me this action bar. I can search for classes, search for files, symbols, actions. Also, I can search everything. I'm going to stick to files and I'm going to start typing, for example, app component. As you can see, it shows me the file path and also showing me where is app component sitting in my project. Press enter and it will take me to the file. So I'm going to type app module. Let's go here. And there you go. I'm in app module file now. Now, this seems very simple. Probably you think uh, that VS Code can do that as well. Well, definitely can do. But the way WebStorm does it, it there is no uh, comparison between this and VS Code in terms of searching. We've got some common operations here like select all, common select mode. we got some join lines, complete current statement. So for example, if I'm going to type here P and as you can see, it automatically added this closing P tag for me because it knows it's an HTML file and I'm trying to create a P tag so it will do that for me as well. Now also, if I go to source folder and I'm going to try going to this and if I target a component called app root and it's going to use app root with the slash and it's going to close that for me as well because it knows about Angular very well. So it has a support in HTML, it has a support in TypeScript and also the SAS file will have a support as well if you're using one. I'm using .css file, which is like a plain CSS. Okay, so that's all good now. I'm going to take you to NPN. Here we have some sort of like a NPN uh, 
tool window as well where I can have a start, build, test and lint command. I can click on the start and it's going to start my project. And you can see on this bar as well, this is like a quick bar tool where you can see all of your projects. Uh, configuration you can see if it's your project is running you can start stop debug and you have some git operations here like comment or you want to update project okay so here our project is started i'm clicking on this localhost 4200 and there you go this is like a demo app is running it's a angular application so we're going to go back to the code now and here we have an npn window now another thing that i will tell you here is that webstrom is very smart it's gonna pop out of windows which are required in your project depending on your project so if you have like a react project you will see some react window here which will help you to you know do a commands uh on the fly okay top toolbar uh is here you can toggle on some windows you can toggle off some windows so i'm gonna go to windows and I'm going to click on this active windows and here we can say active window or hide the tool window. It's going to hide that tool window, whatever is active there. You go back to window and also you can have edited tabs. You can split these. So I'll get to these. These are like a common things that we're going to talk about. Okay. So edit menu, it's covered. Now view menu is pretty simple as well. Here would have a tool windows. We get some appearance options that you can use like a presentation mode if you want to just present your code it's going to look like this okay and if you are going to exit that then you're going to have to go back to view edit presentation mode okay i'm going to open this project uh, window as well now this is very simple uh, you can zoom in or you can resort the current layout as well so if i press command control plus you can see you can zoom in or you can zoom out from your ide okay so that's very simple you have some background tasks happening here we'll show if the webstorm is doing some background tasks you can view them here okay so we've covered some basic operations uh now we're going to talk about some settings and installing plugins I'm going to click on WebStrom. I'm going to go to preferences and I'm going to click on plugins. Now, if you're using Windows computer, you're going to have to click on file menu and click on settings to get to this window. Okay. I'm going to show you a few plugins that I will recommend. So first of all is a material team UI. It offers a great theme for WebStrom and currently I'm using a team called GitHub. That's one of my favorite when I'm using a white or white theme. If I'm going to use the dark theme, I'll stick to this material team UI and use their dark theme. Okay. Now in the plugin section, you have two things, a marketplace or install. Here I've seen, uh, I can see all the installed plugins. So you could see that view project when you were going to create a project. That's because that view.js is installed in my IDE. Now I'm going to go back to marketplace and going to click on this ember.js, click on accept. And now it's going to start supporting ember.js as well. And you will see when we, when we create a new project, you'll see that there as well. A lot of plugins available. You're going to just have to find which fulfills your requirement. Talk about material team UI. I'm going to click on file menu and open my dash project. It's going to ask me whether I want to open this in this window or want to create a new window or attach. Attach basically means that it's going to open here and you can switch between projects. I'm going to use this window and I'm going to click on terminate because the WebStorm is running the project. I'm just going to terminate that. Now I've got a lot more code so I could talk about material UI theme. First, let's find out if that theme is installed. I'm going to click on plugins. And let's click on install and I can see I have a material team UI. Now WebStorm will show you if there is any updates available and it's asking for to apply that update. You're going to have to restart an ID. I'm just going to click on that and just restart an ID, which wouldn't take long. So, you know, we can basically make sure we have a latest and greatest material UI team to talk about. Okay. 
Now it's going to show you material team UI updated to version 4.11.4. All of these uh, plugins have a notification feature which you can turn on and off as well. So I will click on this cross button to get rid of that. Now in this project, I'm going to be going to one of the files. So I'm going to open a file by pressing command shift O and I'm going to find a file. Let's just say login component ts file here we got a lots and lots of code so i'm going to show you pressing command 2 or you can click on this structure tool window which will show you all of the functions that you can switch between how do we switch team there are a couple of ways that you could do you can go to tool window and here you will see all the options for your plugins so i've installed material team and I can see that until team menu here and I can select what are the team that I would like to apply. There are accent colors, the panel colors and material team options that you can try out. One team I like is a darker theme built by material team UI team. So there you go. Now there are a few things that are not quite right in WebStorm because this was supposed to update it. So I'm just going to have to minimize it and open it again. Now you will see the changes of the team. Now we can see we have a very nice color scheme here, especially when working with TypeScript files and even for Angular as well. So I'm going to go and open, not Angular, actually HTML file. So I'm going to open this app. Nah, that's not the one that I want, but I'm going to try opening. Yep, there you go. So you have a very nice color scheme for your HTML, CSS file. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Now there are other themes that are available here. For example, this one is really nice as well. Deep Ocean. I like this one as well. Uh, it keeps the color, uh, color scheme for the text same, but it changes the color to this ocean color. There are other options available here like uh, Mono Kai theme. Okay and we're going to have that changed now you can go ahead and install the plugin or install the team so i'm going to go here and i'm going to find for let's just say team okay let's click on marketplace and search for team and you can see there's a lot of themes available so one of them is intellij light team i'm going to click on install and it's going to install that team and also apply that so this is like sometimes a default team that gets installed when you use the WebStorm without any settings imported. Okay, I'm going to switch back to GitHub team, which is quite nice. So I'm just going to use this GitHub team. You can install whatever the team you like. Talk about a navigation. You can navigate to your files using the project tool window or you can click on these arrows and this will list out all the files which are sitting in the current folder. You can go all the way back to the source folder or app folder, it's up to you. The way I would like to navigate using WebStorm is by using this uh, file finder. I can type the file and name and then you know go to that file straight away. Well, it's up to you how you wanna be you know making your workflow using WebStorm. Okay. Now you can see all the files have some, you know, icons with the folder. So component have like a yellow icon there as well. In terms of uh, this editor area, I can have a uh, multiple files open. So I'm going to open this something like this content.sas file or module file. And I can switch between these files by pressing command shift square bracket left and then right. So I like to use keyboard a lot and a wide mouse because that makes my hand move all the way from keyboard to mouse and it wastes the time. Okay, so a lot of files. Sometimes you want to open a file on the side. So you can right click on this and click on split vertically and you can see the file on the right and you can close this one. It's just like I'm mirroring the file. If I start typing here, you'll see the changes there as well. Press command Z to undo. I'm going to close this file and I'm going to start working on this file, but I need the reference from this file. So that's why I keep this open. This is how I do my workflow. Sometimes I have multiple files open, like I can click on this, click on split open. So you have a three window open side by side. You can do that as well. 
So that's uh, something that you're gonna have to find yourself how you navigate around your files. I would highly recommend avoid using mouse. Use keyboard as much as you can, but you wanna use keyboards, you might wanna set up some shortcut keys. So let's take a look how you do that. So we're gonna go to WebStorm Preferences and then click on Key Map. Now in this window, you can select a key stroke or key map for particular action. Here we have editor actions. So let's just say what this command or control K would do. So it says cut up to the line end. Okay. Well, what does this does? It decreases the font size. Okay. So as you can see, there's a lot of uh, key actions available here that you can set the commands for, which is great. I'm going to go to tool window and here if you ask me i set up my tool window uh, with command and a numeric uh, digit so i have this terminal open with command o project window command one so these were manually set up by me okay i can go and change these shortcut keys as well so to add the shortcut key you're gonna have to double click and then click on add keyboard shortcut as you can see, you can add a mouse shortcut keys, which are not really useful. But if you have like a smart uh, mouse, which has like a million buttons on it, you can do that as well. I'm going to click on add shortcut. And here I'm going to type command seven, press OK, apply, click on OK to close this window and try it out. I'm going to click on OK and let's just do command seven. And as you can see, I can open favorite is window by using command seven. Let's go back to the key back and you can see you can change the commands here. Now other stuff like version control system that has some shortcut keys that you can assign to simply double click add keyboard shortcut or mouse shortcut and assign that. Okay. That's how you assign keyboard shortcut and I would highly recommend that please do that because it's going to make your workflow very, very fast. Now we're going to click on navigate and here we have some shortcut keys. We, I've been using this command shift O to navigate to the files. So you can navigate to the class, the symbol, custom folding or line number. Sometimes you want to go to the line number. So press command L that will appear. So that will show you the current command, sorry, current line number. So I'm going to try going to, let's just say 49, enter and there you go. I am at 49. This is not very useful because I can go up and down by using page down keys. If you have a keyboard with the page down key, uh, it's up to you. I'm using this, uh, you know, Mac specific keyboard. It doesn't have a numeric pad means it doesn't have this page up and down keys. Okay. Let's uh, hide this favorites window. Check out some more options in a navigate menu. We have a back forward. So if you want to go back to the cursor, so you can press command back, you know, command and square bracket actually, and you can go forward as well. Okay. This shortcut key is really great because sometimes you use mouse, these keys, and I don't really like to use that because I don't want to touch my mouse while I'm developing. Bookmarks are great here. Sometimes you want to remember the piece of line that you want to come back to it. For example, if I say I want to come back to this ng on init function, I can bookmark this one. So I'm going to toggle this on by clicking on this, go to navigate, bookmark, and says toggle bookmark. And short keys for that is F3. Now I'm going to click on that, and there you go. There's a tick mark here that I've bookmarked this line of code. Now, how do I see those bookmarks? Go to bookmarks and say show bookmarks with command F3 and you will see this window appearing and it will list out all the bookmarks with their preview. And that is a great because you want to click on the bookmark and you want to see the preview straight up. You don't want to go back to editor and see what's up there and click on that. Okay. You don't want to switch. So you can just, you know, clear bookmark or edit bookmark with the description as well. I'm going to take a look at another option here called jump to navigation bar which, where you can use keyboards and I, if I press enter or return on a Mac you get to see the folder structure of that particular so that will reflect the current file so if I switch to this file you will see the navigation bar will change and you can go to navigation bar by using this 
uh, shortcut key, command up arrow, and then you can navigate around your file structure using navigation bar. There are a few other options like file structure that will show up this window and it will show the file structure. It's similar that we have this tool window where you can see the same kind of file structure, but you can see that in a dialog box by clicking on this button. I'm gonna take you back to this TS file and here you can see a lot of options are visible here. For example, super method or test or declaration or usage because those things are not available in SAS files. That's why we don't see those things. So they will be like, you know, grayed out. Now, a lot of times you want to find an error in your file. Then you can use this shortcut key F2 or shift F2 to go to the previous error or next error. WebStorm is great to figure out what is a problem in your file and you can find out by clicking on this option. Next, we have next method and previous. Well, you can use the shortcut key, which is preferable. It's gonna scroll through the methods available in your TypeScript file. WebStorm support many different types of files like JavaScript, TypeScript, and also SAS. So you're gonna find out if that is supported or not the type of file that you're working on. Now there's other options in navigation bar which you can check out yourself. It will show you the type hierarchy or related symbols. I don't want to go into details, but if these are the options that are useful. I don't really use much, but you can try out these options as well, like type declaration and stuff. I try to use the shortcut keys, by the way. So code is something that you're going to be looking into all the time. Where, for example, if you would like to generate setters and getters, so you can go and click on this generate and it will create uh, getters and setters automatically of the properties that you've defined in your TypeScript or JavaScript file. If I click on getters and setter, here I'll see two properties in our login component file, login form and login prop. And if I select both and click on OK, it will generate setters and getters for me. Now we have an override method option as well that's not supported here. It says no member to override have been found. Uh, WebStorm is pretty smart enough to figure out which can be overridden, so you can use that as well. Well, you could write those functions by yourself, but it just saves a bit of time that you can, you know, use this option to generate the code for you. Completion and folding, these are basically an option where if you want to expand or collapse. For example, if I click on collapse all, it's going to collapse all the functions like this. And then you can click on these dot dot dot. It will show you the preview if you just hover over or if you click on it, it's going to expand that. And also you can expand all the functions. Sometimes the files grows and grows and there's a lot of function, probably 10 and 20 of them. Then you can use these um, collapsing option to just you know show those functions what you're currently working on so options here for example dot comments or collapse dot comments so there's javascript comments that you can write in your typescript file and javascript file you can expand them and collapse them okay so we're going to go to this completion option here we have something like basic and smart type and cycle expand words or cycle expand word backwards let me show you the basic one for example if i am going to write something in html i think i've already shown you that so i'm gonna try you know using this p tag and press Control space and that will give you all the options that you can use so right now the p tag is already there it's complete that's why it's not showing anything but if you have some suggestion from webstorm then it will show up here so this is basically your completion Control space and control shift space for smart types. These are mainly used for when you have interfaces implemented in your TypeScript file, then you can see the suggestion what that look like or what are the options available for you in your HTML or TypeScript file or even SAS files. Uh, this is basically just a suggestion, okay? We have an insert live template that's out of the scope of this uh, course. Comment with line. So for example, if I want to comment this out, I can press command slash and that's coming from here. That's the option, command slash. Comment with block comments. You can add shift with your shortcut key to add comments as a block comments. Now, good part about WebStorm is refactor code or reformat code. 
these are a few options that are really really helpful for example reformat code so if i just go and move this up and just you know put this here let's just say you've got some python going on and python you know doesn't like uh in proper identation you have you have to have a proper identation to be able to work with python so you could use these kind of options uh, in pycharm they are available there as well so I'll click on reformat code and you can see it will reform my code and fix up the identation for me automatically other options as well like auto intent just to intent lines you can use that optimize imports for example if I come here and as you can see the validator is grayed out which means it hasn't been used in this file so to manually go and find these invalid imports or unused imports in your imports of your TypeScript file or JavaScript file it's quite uh, quite takes a lot of time to fix these things so you can go code and say optimize imports and that will actually get rid of all the imports which are not required in that file as you can see WebStorm is actually reading your TypeScript code, which is really, really smart. The other options as well, which are used like code cleanup, I can click on that and I can select whether I wanna clean up this file or hold project. If I click on okay and select hold project, you can see it's scanning, it's in a background task. And then once it finds out something is not right, it will show you this is not right, clean up your code or give you suggestion, okay? There are other options like duplicates, which is one of the best options that I can tell you in WebStorm. Sometimes you have a, a function which has the same return type. Sometimes you have a multiple functions does the same thing and this can find those duplications. So it will help you to clean your code, make sure that your code is all good. Uh, no extra code is written. So this option is really, really handy. You can just use locate a duplication it will go and read your whole project and find the similar type of functions or properties which are unnecessary or if they return the same sort of thing okay this is one of the great things. refactor is great it will basically can refactor your file names so let's just say I have this uh, storage service here okay that's a storage service here I'm gonna to go to that storage service in Angular code to show you what does it mean. So the core services and here I've got the storage service, okay? I'm gonna open that as a split, close it. Now login component imports this storage service, okay? Now if I right click on this and click on refactor and I get to see all of these options, I can go here and I can say I refactor this, which I have selected it. And it gives me a few options like rename or change signature or move this copy file, save delete, okay? Save delete is something that it will look at your project and it will only delete things, if only delete it, if that's actually not gonna cause problem with your project. So I'm just gonna rename that. And I'm going to name this uh, S service, okay? And I'm going to press return here. And then it says rename file. I will say yes. And now once that happens, you notice that in login component, it automatically renames that import, which is great, right? So you refactored the whole project wherever this service was used, it will be changed to this name. So you can see how smart is WebStorm. I'm gonna press Command Z or Control Z on Windows to undo changes, and you'll see the changes will be reverted. Now you're gonna have to check out these refactoring options which are great. It can do refactor a lot of things in your code. Now run is something that it will help you to configure stuff in your IDE in terms of visual clicking on the button. For example, if I am a Angular developer, I'm gonna have to open terminal and to run this code, I'm gonna have to type ng serve. Now, sometimes not many people like Terminal, I do like it and I love using Terminal. It gives you more freedom, but sometimes you just wanna set up your project that you could click on this play button and then your project start and then it start debugging as well. So let's take a look at these options here. I'm gonna click on here. This is a tool bar. Let's click on this and click on edit configuration. Right now I've got this HTTP request. If you wanna check out how to use HTTP client in WebStorm, 
or in any JetBrains ID, have a look at my video. I drop a link in the description of this video. So here in JavaScript debug, I've got this Angular application. Once I click on that, I'm given this URL, which is the default URL when our application runs, it uses this URL. So it will debug this uh, URL. We got some NPN. Basically, it's reading my package.json file and it's giving me all the script that I have available there. And you can see I can just select one of the build prod and then have another configuration done. And then I will go and select that configuration, click on play button, and that will be you know executed. So you don't have to worry about typing commands in the terminal. There's a lot of things that you could do here. I'm just gonna put it back to the start so I don't lose it. We got some protractor support here as well. So you wanna run this end-to-end -end testing, you can select that. Click on this plus button and you will see what is supported in WebStorm by default. You definitely can install and find plugin and install those and get the support for that particular framework. But these are the default ones that are supported here. For example, if you're using gulp.js file, to do the task run and stuff, then you can do the configuration for gulp.js so you don't have to remember those commands. And once I select that, it'll give me some suggestion that what is achievable by using gulp file. So I'm just gonna delete that. Okay, a lot of things that you could do here, guys. A lot of frameworks are supported here and gives you lots and lots of freedom. Usually WebStorm will auto configure this for you by reading your project. Like I didn't configure this NPN uh, configuration because I have a package.json file and automatically read that file and did the configuration for me automatically. Now just to show you demo, I'm going to go and click on this play button after I select Angular CLI server. It's going to open up this run window and it's going to tell me that, hey, I'm running this uh, node dot server dot js file and it's going to execute ng start automatically for me and once that's running i can go to this list and select angular application and then click on this debug button which is like a debugger and it's going to open up chrome browser for me and it's going to target localhost 4200 i can stop all or i can stop this i'm just going to stop angular application debugging and I'm going to find out why my server wasn't running. So it's just sitting there, not actually doing anything. So I'm just going to stop this. I'm going to try running this with, uh, you know, terminal. So I'm type ng serve and it should start executing or running. So it says browser list is outdated. Please run blah, blah, blah. Okay. So there's a problem with NPN. It wants it to, to update that. That doesn't matter. That's out of the scope of this video. But as you can see, our service is starting. And after that, I'll show you how you can debug. Now, not just Angular, it can debug React, Vue, uh, and all those frameworks that you've seen in the list. It has a strong support for those. So here you can see it's running on localhost 4200. I'm gonna click on this debug button, okay? And then it will start the Chrome, and I can start doing a breakpoint on my code. So here if I click on this one, it's a constructor function which is going to be called when this is executed. So here's my code now. I'm gonna try going to the login page and then you will see the breakpoints happening. Okay, it didn't happen. So I'm gonna type some sort of random email and random password. And then there's a login function on submit form. I'm just going to debug this one, okay? Let me click on this login and you will notice we have a breakpoint activated. Now I can do a debugging here. So you can debug pretty much all kind of JavaScript frameworks in WebStorm, and it has a really strong support. You can see you got a console there, you got elements, you got scripts that gets loaded. Um, yeah, and then you can just, you know, see what the values are there. And I can hover over on the form and I can see this is what I typed in, okay? So it's really, really great. I'm gonna just click on this stop to stop the debugging and let's close the Chrome browser as well. Now, uh, next thing we're gonna talk about some of uh, version control system. So here we have a separate menu for version control. So I use Git and Git is the most recommended version control system uh, for nowadays. So here we have a Git option. 
I can do comment file and annotate, show current revisions. I can compare, do a pull request, you know, all those common, uh, common stuff which are available in Git or available here. For example, if I would like to see the history of just this code, I can select this, right click on it, go to Git and then see show me local history or show me uh, history for this branch. So I'm going to click on history for this branch and I can see who worked on this code and when it was started. Okay, so you can select particular selection and see its history. And there's a lot of things that you could do, which you want to do. For example, if you want to compare this with one of the branch, like a master branch, and it tell me what's the difference. And you can click on these arrows to actually replicate the changes or move the changes. I'm going to press un control Z to undo because I don't want to mess up my code. Um, in VS Visions uh, control system, I'm going to press a shortcut key here, which is going to open up this tool window. And this is the main where I usually spend my time when I'm working with Git within WebStorm. So I can see the local changes. What are the files are changed since the last commit? Okay. I can see the log. So this is a really nice uh, visualization of your commits. You got a pull request. So if there's any pull request pending that you can actually, you know, approve or disapprove or do a comment on that. So for that, you're going to have to log into GitHub to see the pull request. You got a console here, which will show you all the Git execution. For example, if I would like to do a comment. So here, if I say comment file, it open up this window. I'm going to expand this. And there are a few features that you could do. So before you want to comment, you maybe want to refactor the whole project. You can check this. You want to rearrange the code, optimize import, and check to do's as well, or clean up the code, which means that it's going to actually uh, remove all the unused code. And uh, there are options like you can type the you know author name here. Okay. Here you type the comment message, and then you can scroll to the file. And you can see what did you change before you can comment. Okay, this Git uh, version control uh, feature is amazing in JetBrains. It's really, really amazing. I've used other various UI uh, products using uh, for the Git. I've never liked anything like this. So yeah, give it a shot. I'll be creating some short videos about the Git version control system. And if I create a full fledged git video using webstrom i will link to this uh, that video in the description of this video okay it's already very lengthy so i'm just gonna try wrapping up by showing you a couple of more things in webstrom so here we got get from version control where you can paste the url of your git repository and you can clone that directly in webstrom we got some uh github support bitbucket support here but you're gonna have to install plugins for that we got commit directly here. You can use uh, commit button here if you want to uh, commit your code. And yeah, if you're familiar with the Git, then you can see what are the options available, like all the branches, merge, changes, unstash or stash changes, reset head. So the, 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 these commands require a lot of uh, typing in terminal and you gotta remember those commands, but using WebStorm, you can do it here. Okay, uh, let's go to SSH client. So WebStorm has SSH client built into it. You can use a visual part of it as well. It'll show you the visual folder structure for that if you want to use that. Because using terminal with uh, with SSH, it's quite, quite a lot of things that you need to remember. Okay, uh, but if you're on Windows, this is great. You don't have to use Putty or any other third party SSH client. In tools, you can go ahead and install more plugins and you will see those options here. Let's go back to preferences and we we'll talk about some of the common uh, settings that I like to do before I set up my project or start working on it. Now I'm gonna take you to language and frameworks. So here you can see a JavaScript particular stuff for here, like libraries which are supported, or you could do some configuration for Webpack, templates, Yoman, Cordova, uh, Meta.js. 
So have a, have a read through these options and you'll figure out. There's a GraphQL support for that, a node, NPN. So yeah, and very strong type of code as well, okay? So if you like this video, guys, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions about JetBrains IDs, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer that. I'll be creating a lot more videos on JetBrains IDE because covering this whole ID in one video is not possible because there's a lot of options that are probably not showing in this video. Uh, so yeah, every time I find out a new options, I'll be creating videos. So if you want to keep yourself updated with JetBrains IDE or overall programming languages, Please, kiss, uh, please subscribe to the channel and also give this video a like if you did like it. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.